Welcome to the very first episode of HGC After Dark, a brand new multi-platform channel investigating Yorkshire's supposedly supernatural hotspots. Have you ever wondered if there's life after death? Or if poltergeists really exist? Or whether supernatural forces can actually possess objects or buildings? Here at HGC After Dark, we certainly have those questions. We're on a quest to find those answers. We'll be traveling around Yorkshire, visiting notorious locations, and meeting people who claim to have had paranormal experiences. I've seen a lot of the channels won't look like people. We'll be employing the latest technology in our search for clues. Our team, Dave, host and researcher, and co-founder of HGC After Dark. We're talking to an angry spirit. Brett, resident techie and co-founder. Hi, readings here. Mark, video specialist and skeptic. No. Together, we are HGC After Dark. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and be sure to drop a comment below telling us what you think. Now with that out of the way, let's get on with our first show from our first location. And what a location we have. We've been given exclusive, unprecedented access to one of Yorkshire's most notorious haunted hotspots, the hostel at 39 Degray Street, Hull. Strange activity has been reported at the house for many years. Local and national media have also visited the home and documented their experiences. Andy, the current owner of the house since 2001, had previously never believed in ghosts, but he moved out just two years later and he's refused to live there ever since. From the outside, the house looks fairly normal, but on the inside, its rooms have been converted into seance areas and where dolls, supposedly aimed at enticing spirits, cover almost every surface. Behind the house is a large Victorian three-story brick warehouse now divided into areas featuring all manner of macabre sites, including chairs that people died in, a picture gallery of the dead, and furniture brought in from other supposedly haunted venues. Both buildings have seen several tragedies, including suicide by hanging. But does that mean the site is really haunted? Come and join us as we investigate 39 Degray Street, Hull. We arrived at dusk to begin our first night of investigations and after a cautious walk through the darkened garage, we went straight to the dining room of the house and wasted no time unpacking and setting up our kit. One tool we have in our arsenal is the electromagnetic field detector or EMF. Right, it's an EMF reader. I'm just going to try and go around and get some base readings to see if we can find any particular hot spots and then also make any notes if we do find anything. What will it do if you find any hot spots? It'll, um, as you see, the LEDs yeah. increase. So, so we're on one at the minute. One at the minute, so obviously you want to get to the red or even the uh, amber. Moving into the living room reveals a space filled with old furniture and lots of dolls. As we're on two here. It is believed by some in the paranormal community that ghosts, spirits and demons are attracted to dolls and can even interact with dolls and other objects. Flashing it well on the two. Then some turn around there. That's my story, yeah. One object of interest is this portrait, drawn, we are told, by a person claiming to be a psychic after they was given a tour of the house. The owner of the house then framed and mounted the picture on the living room wall. But right now at the portrait, our EMF readings are very low. It is claimed a second, almost identical picture also exists. That too, drawn by another self-proclaimed psychic, who'd also been given a tour, but on a different day. As we have not seen this alleged second portrait, we're unable to verify its existence. Got some high readings here. That's a potential hotspot, that, so we'll make a note of that. Oh, yes, I wonder if 
you know, there could be spirit. Died down a lot, so it could have been something here. Now it's. See, it's down. Oh, there we go again. Then if we want a minute, we've got a chair on the couch and we could do some readings around this table at some point. Maybe do some glass work. What's glass work then? So what happened is we'd all sit around the table, all put a finger on the uh, glass itself. Okay. And then we'd just basically ask questions and then the energy, what we give off, should allow us to, the spirits to come through and move this. So we've actually got labels also written on the, yeah, on so the table there and the to, Yeah, it's spell a word in general. Okay. Well that is... Calm down, huh? With the living room giving us some strong readings, we decided it would be a good place to conduct an experiment. But before we did that, we moved on to the dining room. Can I just try that or try and lift stairs quickly? Yeah. I just want to see. I'll return on both. Just press the button. Yeah, must the stairs. The cupboard under the stairs made the national press when British tabloid newspaper The Sun sent reporter Lee Price to investigate the house. Price reports of several people claiming to be mediums and clairvoyants, and they believe that young and poorly children were taken to the hostel supposedly for care, but were actually kept locked in the cupboard under the stairs, enduring torture, rape, and eventually murdered. Now their spirits supposedly haunt the property. Meanwhile, Dave's EMF meter detects no radiation from the outside of the cupboard, and access is currently blocked, but we'll tackle that and the mysterious doll in a future episode. A lot of these artefacts have been brought from all of the, the country. Yeah. So you don't actually know if anything's actually attached to them. But when you go to certain ones... That's it, yeah, they fluctuate, don't they? It's going to fluctuate so much. You get nothing See from that? there, yeah, yeah. but then you go back to this, which means that one. What about that creepy head? Nothing to anything from there. With the downstairs of the house swept for EMF, it was time to check out the upstairs of the property. The three-storey house is a rabbit warren of dark, narrow, unlit steps and corridors, leading off to what would have been bedrooms when the house was occupied. Alright, so I'm going to go to the mirror room. The mirror room? Yeah. Okay. We'll see what kind of uh, weather we're getting here. So this is a mirror room, wall to wall mirrors. They normally do this because it can act like a ball. So there is kind of come through. Are you just running it along the mirrors at the minute? Yeah, just seeing if we can get I mean, normally we'll get more fluctuate than when you start to speak and you know you've got a few people to the energy up. Okay. Uh, but I'll say at the minute we're just getting those bases so we know if there's any particular possible movement to focus on. I think in here seems okay. But we'll to move on and we'll go to the doll room next. Okay, the doll room. So I've been here before and it's obviously uh, this is a creepy room. Doll room, uh, number two. Call the doll room because there's dolls everywhere, and some of them are meant to have. I'm hoping we get a spike on a particular doll, so then we can use 
tough experience. Oh, black ones. Got two on that black one there. What you earn? Two on that one there as well. Yeah, there's just up to 1.5 on the EMP. So what we'll do now is we'll go to the owner's old bedroom where the apparition of a little girl. The apparition of a little girl? Yeah. So what we've got here then, Brett? So this is the bedroom of the owner when he used to live here. So tell us about this uh, this chimney that we're looking at. I've not like looked and studied right into it, but as far as I'm aware, there was um, a young girl which had been supposedly buried into the chimney breast. Um, as I said, I've not really looked fully into it, so I'm just talking off what I've seen and what I've heard you people just say. Relaying like someone else's information, yeah, testimony. And, okay. Um, and like I say, when Andy told us about the apparition of the girl. And then when I found out about the chimney breast with the guy, it, it, in any kind of way it fits together. So I'm hoping tonight we can sort of communicate and pick some stuff up um, on, on that fact. Just as Brett was explaining the history of the room, the hostel's current owner, Andrew Yates, joins us to share his experiences of living at the house. What can you tell us about the girl in the chimney? Just, just stand a little bit near the chimney for us. Sorry, are you doing something? I'm just cleaning this or something, but I'm just doing it. Oh, yeah, so just, uh, just stand by that chair for us. Just tell us what's going on in the chimney, you think. Um, the one I, when I lived here, about, this was my bedroom, and the bedroom's up against that wall there. Okay. Um, and I woke up in the middle of the night one night. Like a girl just stood here, just in front of the fire. where the cot is now. Yeah, just right in front of the fireplace. And uh, she was there for 20 minutes, and she was just staring at me, straight into my eyes all the time. And obviously, it freaked me out. Um, but then when, when we first started signing up in groups, and I asked them not to put anything on Facebook for a few weeks, because I wanted to get different groups and different mediums to see what they picked up on. And the first three four will come in the house walk around and say, oh, I can feel this, feel that. And as soon as I came in here, they said, every one said it was a girl's body in that chimney stack. In this and chimney stack? Yeah. And at that point, I hadn't told anybody what I'd seen. So why, why were they saying this? Why, why did they feel that there was... I'm assuming they were quite adamant about that. Yeah, people, mediums, they were straight away just said there's a girl's body in there. Right. And obviously, knowing what I knew, why I'd seen it, it kind of went in my head, I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you weren't asleep when you seen the, or you was asleep, but you woke up yeah, when, when you up, seen the person. Right, yeah, yeah. The apparition. Yeah. No, yeah. no chance that you was having a lucid dream or anything like that, no. Uh, so I was wide awake, it was, I thought somebody was in the house, that's what woke up me up. Okay. Because I just sat by the front and then, because I kind of like, Kind of properly woke up. And I looked just saw it in front of me, and I thought, and I was like looking out and just confirming that I wasn't dreaming. Or, uh -huh. And I've never taken drugs, so I 
Oh. You were quite sober that night, and yeah, uh, yeah it's a normal, regular night. Yeah, yeah. Have you been, been, you slept in the house since? Yeah, I can't live in there, yeah. Okay. I've been the same for the rest of that night, though. No, nah, no. Nah. But, um, but he lived here for eight years in total. Yeah. 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 Okay. I lived seven years by myself and then my girlfriend moved in for the last year as well. How did your girlfriend find it? She saw sort of things that night as well. Okay. Yeah, mm. she experienced that, yeah. What made you move out in the end then? How did that yeah. come about? She was pregnant and the further on the pregnancy got, it was just come more and more active all the time. And right. Things like, if you quit, was just like, be pulled up over your head and stuff and it was our first kid, our first baby. And yeah. You're like overly protective with your first one then. Gosh. So it's just, oh, you just want a safe place to have a, to have a child. Oh, right. Not not a suitable environment for her. I do the way you just want to safe. Okay. At that point was knives being moved around and stuff like that. And right. When because I was kinda of new to it, I was I was never into a paranormal stuff, so kinda of learning carefully. But like <clears throat> when I went, I did be washing up one one night. Put all the plates on the drain. This is when I did by myself. Yeah. And then came down in the locker, went to bed, came down in the morning, and a big long steak knife had been taken out of the drawer and balanced along the top of the plates. And when you're new to it, sort of thing, you don't know what they're capable of. Right? Yeah. I don't know if <clears throat> you move the knife from there to there. Can I get a knife and go out? Right? You don't know. And. It's just complete speculation without knowing what we're capable of. So is it this kind of like not knowing the anxiety, the fact that it was, because uh, knives are quite obviously serious objects yeah, with yeah. a lot of meaning and connotation behind yeah. them potentially. Yeah. Okay. Not a newborn baby, there's just no way you could have a baby in it. No. Nah. Stuff like knives being moved out, it's just not. No, nah, no. Nah. It's bad enough for the cat in the house, isn't it? Like, yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. Potential spook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With Andy's claims of an apparition of a young girl appearing in his room and the suggestion of a body buried in the chimney breast, we decided Andy's old bedroom would be the first room in the house in which we'd attempt to make contact with whatever spirits are claimed to be roaming the house. For this we'll switch over to our infrared camera as it is believed by some that spirits are more visible to camera sensors working in the infrared light spectrum. Resident Techie Brett can be seen testing out a new prototype from HGC's arsenal of tools. This SLS camera, which at the time of recording was still in development and given us a few reliability issues on this particular evening, will certainly be making an appearance in future episodes. Dave is using his phone as an audio recorder in the hope we'll capture some electronic voice phenomena, or EVP. EVPs are sounds found in electronic recordings that are interpreted as spirit voices which have either been unintentionally recorded or intentionally requested and recorded. The idea was popularised in the 1970s. EVPs are typically brief, usually the length of a word or a short phrase. Another device we'll be using tonight is one of the many so-called spirit box apps available to download. We'll be using a paid for app called Deadwave. The app's description reads, Instrumental Transcommunication, or ITC, is a communication with spirits through electronic devices. EVP theory suggests that we can communicate with spirits or otherworldly entities on a recording device. The method that these spirits seem to be using is known as sound manipulation, or transform EVP. Though we are not exactly sure how this process is done, we know that it involves a modulation of sound waves in a manner that will change its characteristics onto a recording device. They go on to say, they may also communicate in real time, also known as opportunistic EVP. Simply put, they claim, spirits can change sounds in order to form speech and therefore have the ability to communicate. What you are about to see are our attempts at communicating with the supposed spirits of 39 Degray Street from Andrew Yates' bedroom. Is anyone in this room with us? We're back. You can communicate with us via any of the phones that we've got on the table. Can I tell you his name? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Sorry, 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 sorry. Can you say my name? If you did, say it again. Sounds two chapters deep. Yeah, so we've got a lot of things going through. Scan the increase that. This camera's going to be facing behind you, but just in case something comes up from behind you. Yeah. Is there anybody in this room with us now? If there is, you can communicate into this device. Can you tell us your name? What was that? Mm -hmm. It's in my bedroom. Whose bedroom is this? Come down, use our energy and try and say your name as loud as you can into that phone in front of Brett and we'll pick it up, we'll, we'll pick your voice up What is your name? That's a Dave I thought I said David, yeah I'll ask that again see if we can use my name because then that's it's reacting um, intelligence isn't it, it's the intelligence reaction If you can, what's my name? Do you want to tell me my name on, on the phone? That's the day we're getting. I thought I did, but I don't know. 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 Just pause that. Something's really happened in front of me. And I'm really hoping my camera picks up. I had a voice right in front of me there. I like that lean of it. I even reacted to it, looked down at my phone, thinking my phone like spoke to me. But it isn't because it's recording our voice. Yeah. I'm gonna play that back. Something spoke to me in front of my face. Go on and play it back. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss the whole lot of the, the first part and it was the last like what um um uh, right this. Just before that, yeah, it's coming up there. Yeah, I know it was like a whisper. Yeah, it was over that just so that, that was just as I start speaking to Eric. You can hear it. So, it's so something in front of me. It's not behind that, but that's doing it at the same time. Just pause that. One more time. Just to turn off. Stop that, I'm doing it. He said it right in front of my face and I looked down and I'm like, I'm not sure. Yeah, then. Yeah. We'll have to really have to look at that one again. So it's, like it's probably three minutes and five seconds, I think that's when it's where it starts. Literally. Ooh. I was looking at our phone and as I looked to look down, put my head down like that, I hear something speak in front of me and my first reaction is my phone is either going to something else and it's just spoke mm. but then i realized it wasn't you that's recording my own voice that's picking it up but we can look back at it what's brett doing just checking the sls to see if it's uh one still recording two still uh this is mark what's just appeared on there as you can see a stick man there he's waving so it's still recording yeah still working it should be so i just need to check for a few ba battery issues but it is no, not any energy spirits can drain batteries. Okay, when you sit down, can you slide your chair a little bit closer to Dave so I can get you both in a little bit easier? Yeah, 
Yeah. Ta. Oh, that's cursed. Right, so we'll leave that off for now. Just for now, just when we've done one. Could you use that painting or come to the fire? Yeah, big time. I think you just spoke to me in front of my face. If that was you, come down and do that again and speak to my phone and say yes. And then we'll know it was you that just spoke to me. Can you hear every word that I'm saying to you? Tell you what we can do though, we can play a game. There's a lot of energy in this room. If you don't want to show yourself, that's, that's more than fine. But I would ask you a few questions. And what we're going to do is, if you could knock twice for yes and one for no on anything in this room that we can hear, and then we can go go from there. So first question, is there a female in this room with us right now? Two for yes and one for no. This hat keeps going on me years and I can't don't explain tricks on me. So knock twice for yes and one for no. Can you hear my voice? Are you sure? Yeah, uh, people will hear it that way and I'm assuming it's people walking. Oh, but I literally do, do. Ah, oh, okay. Damn you. Do you actually want to speak to us? It's that way, isn't it? It's opening the door. Mm. Damn you, door. Come on. We've heard you. We believe, I believe, you um, communicated and, and said Brett's name. What we think we heard was Brett's name. So we did hear you. We know you're in this room. Got some keys on the table if you want to come and touch them, they'll make a noise. Kids always like playing with keys. You can touch one of us if you want. Or you can have a dance in front of that camera. That'll yeah. pick you up. Stand next, last time. stand next to Mark. And maybe stand on the chair because again, kids like to climb. If Mark's not careful, he's going to move into that Connect camera. Yeah. Stand over here for a bit. Or if you'd like um, to maybe rock that crib. I believe last time was here, it did rock slightly. Try and speak to us again. You just spoke to me not too long ago and I heard you. Try and do that again. Because I know you can. I'm intrigued with this room and I'm intrigued with you. With you. I am, but I'm really intrigued with this room, you know. With that, I'm Brett gets up to check the I'm prototype SLS camera, so camera which so appeared to be working normally at the time, but again, unfortunately yeah. we discovered later on that the device had not actually thing. recorded anything and Brett went right. back to the drawing board. What's it saying, Brett? It's still recording, just uh. I'm just trying to pan the room, so I know I'm going to get you guys in, but that's Mark. Dave probably won't go in because he's sat down. So now you come in there. That's Mark again. Looks like he's got a laser coming out of the front of it. It looks like some out of sci fi when you watch you, it in infrared. You pick it up on my camera as well, and it's literally the wall just full of green little dots. We've got all the technology in this room right now to be able for us to see you. We've made the effort to come back to the house again to speak to you. Do you think they know what the word technology means? I think they do, yeah. Why? I don't know. Maybe if she asks, asks, answers the question, we might find out. Is a technology a, a word? Well, totally, yeah. years ago. In all fairness though, they'll be looking at all the stuff on the on here and probably won't know what half of it is, but yeah. They still know where to speak and what to do, don't they? I don't know. Bloody hell, Mark. What kind of question is that? Kind of, 
kind of question that a skeptic asks. <laughs> is that your phone, man? No, he does. Right. I'm going to run this app again. Oh, right, yeah, go on, man. <clears throat> let me have a look at the uh, effects. So we've got echo, reverb, gate. What's that? So let's try the reverb, see what it does. I'll make it sound like you're in a big concert hall <laughs> or a right. cave. Yeah, that's what reverb is. I've well, got all the channels on it. Echo is the sound in it, just enough for you to hear it if you missed it the first time. Yeah, it's a repeat, yeah. yeah. I'll put my own flight mode. Oh, that's why my uh, phone's on mute, Apparently, if you run this, it can entice spirits into it. So you can see visually certain things. Did you pay for this? And that way. Only off the basis of that episode I watched and stuff should come out, which was like on about the bottom. If you get away in this room, you can come over to this device and try and show yourself. Oh, 
the dish off and just still calls and have nothing going. Maybe your voice will tell that, just a couple more. Really hard to understand that app. Well, when I, um, I mean, if you take the refurb off the echo part, I think you'll probably hear a lot better. What's the app supposed to do? Like, how is it supposed to be working? What, what is it doing? It's scanning through the channels like a spirit box. What channels? Like the FM and AM stations, frequencies. Right. frequencies. Okay. But um, you get a lot of static coming through with them, so sometimes it's quite hard to make out. It's more annoying than anything. White noise. Okay. Yeah, the white noise. So um, am I hearing like little snippets and of yeah. what's being broadcast on FM at yeah, the moment? Yeah, so I'm yeah. hearing bits of Radio One and I'm hearing local commercial Possibly, radio. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. why it sounds like in places like it's Reggie Yates on Radio One. Mm. To be honest with you, it should be flicking through a lot. A lot yeah, of a lot of, yeah, just, yeah. No, that was a scan. I'd put the scan halfway. Yeah, I'd do it more. So, so do it full and try. Yeah, do it more. Full round. Yeah. You are hearing the radio stations because giving sounds pick it up in between each suite. I'm full now. Sure, that sounds like. We do have to contact us now. Can you again, sorry, tell me your age? Try and shout it as loud as you can so we can pick it up. How old are you? Try and stop filming. Can't talk to us for until we can hear you both. Can you hear my voice? I'm not too sure about that accent. It's really good accent. It's really hard to pick anything out, isn't it? That's what's on the other side of that part, but this camera is the same camera it's down. Do you think it's because like, they may be fed up of having the same questions every time I want his spirits are in the room? Well, I'll tell you what then, Barry, you ask something and I'll do the camera. Well, it's just you were saying last night, weren't you, that like, maybe you need to ask because the spirits might get annoyed, that like, or disenfranchised because they're always asked the same questions. Okay. Did he die in the war? Was he killed in this house? Did he try and talk to us through his phone? Answer the questions through the phone and we'll probably hear you. Do you still have family members alive now? Can you say one of our names so we know you're here? Would you like us to leave? Are you still happy here? Um, that episode, I'll link that to you. Yeah. You watch that, 
it's like we yeah, yeah. yeah. get bats and they feed off and now over in the garden and we walk on the car and fucking bats shoot at them and they come through saying boy is here or something like that help that and the other lass is in that 108 room I think but makes her quite haunted and then she starts to feel burning on her back so then he goes to go yeah it's like rats but he it's all in his life that's like funny to think oh I get it yeah, I don't believe there's any evil spirits in this, in this house. I don't think they ever get scratched. I don't think they ever get caught against it, to be honest with you. I think they're good for the occasional bang, but they're very, very known for EVPs and voices. Yeah. So we, uh, we got to the loft? Yeah, we got to the loft. It's so cold in this room. Next time, we'll be reviewing our recordings go exploring the attic and learn about a number of deaths at the property. Dave tells us about Rachel before trying out an old mortuary coffin. See you later, Dave. We'll be releasing a new video every Saturday and we'd love it if you could join us next time. Please like, follow and subscribe to HGC After Dark and check out our website at hgcafterdark.co.uk. Join the conversation by commenting below. We would love to hear from you. So until next time, see you later.